now that the bulk of the open is coming together, we can start to work on some of the visual effects. Let me show you something that Ava is working on for Media Composer that enables you to link directly to DPX files from within the editor. DPX files are something you commonly run into when working with visual effects artists. So we need an establishing shot of the pirate ship that's been firing on us. I've been given a 5K background of the ocean as DPX files, and I want to use this to start building my composition. I can link to them and it comes in as a single clip in Media Composer, and now I can use FrameFlex to extract the HD frame that I want without losing any quality. We want it to look like we are out in the open ocean, so I'll zoom in and avoid the land on either side, and I can also apply a color transformation to get it closer to the look that I need. I'll cut it into my timeline and add the effect by AMA linking to a Photoshop element with an alpha and dropping it on top. Now remember that I'm not locked into this frame on the DPX files. I can adjust the high-res image further at any point in the editorial process. And as I continue to work on it, these same elements could be used as previs and sent via AAF to be worked on further in a visual effects program such as Smoke. So we've got some additional effects that we need to work on, and the base scene from one of them has not been cut together yet. So I'm going to ask Michael to help me out again on that. Now one of the great things about Interplay is the flexibility it offers to a creative team. Now as you saw earlier, I was able to work remotely on Media Composer. But what if I don't have Media Composer? Or I'm not an editor, I could be a producer or logger. Now just by using a web browser, I can log into a component of Interplay called Avid Media Central UX. This is a simple but powerful interface that allows any member of the creative team to not only stream clips and sequences in real time, but also search, add metadata, and catalog material. I can even do a fair amount of editing if I wanted to, and all of that without any additional software. Now, all I have to do is log into Media Central UX, the web-based browser, and I have access to all of the same footage that Corey is working with. I can also quickly narrow down my search by specifying the type of asset that I'm looking for. This is a fully customizable interface. You'll see I have a search pane here. You can bring up the different panes that you're trying to maybe utilize, things like audio with an audio mixer, sequences, little messaging window. So I'm gonna go down to the little search pane here and let's search for a group clip. For 5BK. So categories are custom metadata tags that you can define. So here's your categories. Again, I searched by a different type. These are all definable by you for ways to search through your media. So I've gone in and I've searched for the scene 5BK. The type that I'm looking for is a group. So a multicam group has been checked in from Media Composer from Corey, and I now have access to it. And there it is. Not only can I edit together simple sequences and shot lists, but I can also do multicam editing in a browser. So this is a multicam clip. You'll see that in the Media Central UX, I'm playing back the multicam shot. Now this is great. So I'm gonna go in and use these elements and I'm gonna to cut together a little sequence that I want Corey to be able to use. And again, I'm just using a web browser. So let's choose the sequence that I wanna to cut to. We're going to create a sequence named Flipped, and we're going to go back to our multicam group, and I'm just going to mark ins and outs for the elements that I want to cut into my sequence. There's edit number one. We'll then cut to the next angle. Play that down. There's edit number two. And playing it to the end. There's our third and final edit to the sequence. So I just cut together a multicam group that Corey will be able to see, but this is all about collaboration. So I also wanna add things like possibly a marker. Maybe I wanna send some information for her to be able to see on her system to give her information like maybe to add a sound effect when uh, he hits the railing right here. So we'll go ahead and add a marker. The marker is set to the time code in the sequence and I can say, add a sound effect. Again, this is all about collaboration, no matter where you are in the world. We save that out. And now that I'm done, the sequence is saved and it's immediately available for Corey to see an interplay. 
But the great thing is I can also send a hyperlink to the sequence to her directly so she doesn't have to search throughout the entire interplay system for the sequence. So we'll take the flipped sequence that I created. I'll drag and drop it to the messaging window and add it to the little asset area here. Here's the hyperlink to that three shot with that marker. And I'm gonna go ahead and send that to Corey. So everyone who has access and is a user on Interplay can be instantly messaged and she will be able to see this message once I send it to her with a link directly to that sequence. So now I can load Michael's edit as a source and cut it into my timeline and it links right up to the high res media on ISIS. He's messaged me the sequence within Interplay. All I need to do is open up my messages window so I don't have to search for the asset. You'll see I have one new message there. I'll open that, double click on the sequence, it loads up as a source, and now I can cut it right into my timeline. This is the exact sequence that Michael was working with in a browser. Here's the edit, there's the marker that came across, and now I can cut this into my timeline. So let's play this down. So we have some green screen in there. So I'm gonna do a quick comp on this. There's our background of the sky. We'll cut this in. And now I can drop a spectrum at key on top to get a rough idea of our comp. Quickly just go in and choose the proper color. and we'll key out that green. So really within moments, I've got a rough key together here for our final piece. As you can see, you can do a whole lot more than just edit with Media Composer. From visual effects to sound design, there's really a lot in there. But the reality is that there are a lot of talented people out there with very specialized skills that can help us make the most of our production, and we really just need a way to communicate with them. And that is where AAF comes in. AAF is an industry standard protocol that Avid led the way in developing. It allows my sequence and clip information to be interchanged with not only Pro Tools, but also with other third-party finishing tools like Resolve. I've loaded up our final edit here in the timeline, and this is actually linking directly to the high-res files on ISIS. I can send AAF uh, of my audio to my Pro Tools counterpart, and while the final surround sound mix is being worked on in Pro Tools, I can send this sequence over to Resolve for the final color correction. If we take a look here, in this particular clip, I've actually done some frame flex on this. So if you look here, there's a frame flex on this particular asset, and that's gonna come across to Resolve. As I said, the sequence is linked to the 2K ProRes files on ISIS, and now I'm gonna export an AAF over to Resolve. I'm just going to link to the media. I don't need to export any media. I'm gonna launch Resolve on the same system and link to the same files that I'm linking to here in Media Composer. So we'll save this out to ISIS. And now we can come over to Resolve and import it. And we're just sending metadata around so it's very quick. Import. There's my AAF and we'll bring it in. And there's a couple of things to point out here. I do not need to automatically import my source clips into the media pool. As I said, I'm going to be linking to the media on ISIS. So I'm gonna to choose to link to the source camera files. And I also want to use sizing information. Use sizing information is my way of telling Resolve that I want it to bring in my frame flex parameters. We'll click OK, and you'll see it comes in very, very fast. So here's the exact same timeline we were looking at in Media Composer. And if we come down here, you'll see here are the transform. The frame flex parameters have come across as a transform in Resolve.
So as you can see, the AF translated very easily. The frame flex adjustment has come across. And at this point now, I can render out my final color from Resolve as HD and bring it back into Media Composer via AAF to marry it up with a final sound mix from Pro Tools. Or I could actually finish out a Resolve in 4K. So if we come back into Media Composer, we can load up our sequence with our final uh, graded HD files and our final 7.1 surround sound mix. These are the actual stems that have come across from Pro Tools. And I can mix and monitor these tracks right here in Media Composer. So not only are we viewing the final color corrected HD master, we are listening to the true final surround sound mix. Let's take a look. Captain Flint gets here, we can let him decide. 